Hello everybody, today I am going to be reviewing Rosemary's Baby, which is a classic psychological horror film which came out in 1968, and it is directed by Roman Polanski, who is currently probably one of my favorite directors out there, somebody that I'm just really fascinated by at the moment. I would put him right up there on the level of Alfred Hitchcock, maybe even higher, uh, just in terms of the way that he is able to have such an auteur vision and a command over his audiences. This film was made in the 1960s, which is probably my favorite decade for films and probably just my favorite decade of the 20th century in general, just because it was such a turbulent time. It was the rise of counterculture and you know, psychedelia and all of these great, great things that broke the mold and allowed people to kind of misbehave, quote unquote, whatever that means. But it certainly reflected in the films, which were much more avant-garde and took chances, and I think this one is a prime example of that. So what's the film about? Well, it's about a woman named Rosemary Woodhouse, who is a newlywed. She just married an actor, and they just bought an apartment in Manhattan. They, while they're getting settled in, they meet uh, two neighbors, an, old, an elderly couple, and uh, they're just a little bit odd. They are the classic odd couple, I guess you could say. They are very nosy and just quirky, um, but they become friends. And um, during all of this, Rosemary and her husband are trying to start a family. And finally, when Rosemary does announce that she's getting pregnant, uh, you know, her husband and the two neighbors just start running her life. She has no control over this pregnancy. And um, yeah, again, they're very nosy. So they just, they take over every aspect of it. And you know, as things start to unfold throughout the movie, things get a little bit weird, to say the least. I love the fact that this movie is able to really seep into your being. It really gets under your skin. I know that's a cliche, but this is probably one of the best examples of that cliche because it explores paranoia or the paranoia that's simmering beneath the human consciousness. And I mean, it still resonates today, but I can only imagine what it must have been like at the time because as I said before, the 1960s were just such a, a turbulent period. Um, you know, there was the JFK assassination, Vietnam, uh, civil rights, the list goes on and on and on. And you see this in Rosemary's Baby in so many different symbols, but I would say particularly in uh, religious oppression, uh, masculinity that is kind of at the forefront of society, taking over uh, femininity. And I like the fact that Rosemary is able to kind of be in the middle of all this chaos and she has to come to terms with it. Rosemary is played by Mia Farrow who, you know, she's a very, in terms of her physique, she's just a very petite lady and it, it's a perfect casting because she really pulls off the shy kind of waif-like little girl. I mean, she's a woman in the film, but she seems like a little girl. And um, she allows, I mean, she's just looks like somebody that you'd want to walk all over. I mean, she's not intimidating in the least. You know, it's easy to see why her husband and her neighbors are able to just completely walk all over her. And I, I think that, you know, when she gets pregnant and she starts to get kind of sicker and sicker throughout the film, I don't know what kind of makeup they used, but she, they made her look awful. I mean, she was just, she looked malnourished. She's bony. Her skin just looks just pale and almost bluish. And it, she looked just, she was a mess, but it was very, very effective. But the great thing about her is that she's this woman that, you know, otherwise would never have a chance to really stand up for herself and stand up for, you know, be independent. But in this film, she's forced to have to do that. She's forced to face the fears and face uh, oppositional forces in order to take control of her life. The way that this film is directed, it's very unsettling and it's not necessarily grotesque or you know scary in the traditional sense of a horror film but there's and it, I could say the same for all Ro Roman Polanski films there's just something that is slightly off about it slightly off kilter um, like almost like Stanley Kubrick he's the same way you know a lot of times when you see a horror film I know immediately well this angle is meant to convey this or this is meant to scare you because it's doing this but with somebody like Stanley Kubrick or somebody like Roman Polanski they're doing things in a way that you're not used to and that you've never seen before so you can't quite put your finger on what it is that is affecting you but it it really is I like to say that this movie it, it leaves kind of a sour bad taste in your mouth so yeah, that's one rule I have about watching this movie. Don't eat while you're watching it. It's kind of, 
it's just kind of weird. I think a lot of the intensity of the film and, and the fear that comes out of it comes from the fact that Roman Polanski had such a traumatic childhood. I mean, we all know that he, you know, came from, you know, the period of, of the Nazis, the Holocaust, World War II. And so these experiences, I think, really contribute to the way that he views the world and, you know, how he directs his films. And it's almost as if he, the like Roman Polanski, the director, is standing in the place of Rosemary and you can see all of her plight and, you know, how she's having to deal with all this totalitarianism and all of that. And it, it, I'm sure it resonates with him. I think what resonates with me in particular about the film is probably are probably the dream sequences. I think that they say more about Rosemary and about Polanski as a person uh, more than anything else. You do feel her sense of fear, her sense of guilt also, maybe religious guilt, um, and just the horrors that are going through her mind and the horrors that Polanski's trying to convey to the audience. And maybe it's just because I am a total sucker for, for dream sequences, and that's a total side note. But yeah, if you have any dream movies that maybe I haven't seen, please recommend them to me. Anything that, I mean, the trippier, the more psychedelic, more esoteric, the better. I don't know, maybe I'm just a closeted hippie. I don't know. So if you have not seen this film, please do so. It is just a masterful study in not just the way films are made, but the way that they, how they can interpret the paranoia of people and the psychosis. And it's a subtle horror film, so if you're not into movies that are more about implications than showing things. I would skip it. It's not operatic, it's not gory, and it doesn't have a lot of you know shocks or jump scares or anything like that, but it does have a lot of gravitas. It really, as I said, does seep into your skin in a way that's very unsettling, and it gives you a lot to think about. I've seen this movie many times, and it affects me every time maybe more, I mean, the last time I saw it, which was pretty recently, it affected me more than it ever had before. So those kinds of movies I think are worth sharing. So anyway, that's my review. Thank you all for listening. If you would like to follow me on Twitter, please go to the link below. And also I just started a Facebook page. So uh, there's a link for that as well. So like the page, whatever, and I'll get the ball rolling on that soon, hopefully. So um, yeah, thanks for listening again and have a great day.